All right, guys, I'm back again with another adventure for you today. I'm going to show you how to do InterVLAN routing with uh, firewall rules on Unify, and this is going to be made so easy that anyone can understand. I don't have to worry about my hiding my WAN address right now, so this will be nice and easy, but I really just wanted to make this video for you guys. You guys can just understand it so easy. So let's get right into it. Right, guys this is miles from the future before we get started i wanted to make sure when you guys are creating your vlans make sure that your uh network is off turn auto scale network off too but make sure your uh network isolation is off for your vlan you don't want that on otherwise it's going to be considered a guest and all these firewall rules that we do here today won't mean diddly squat all right let's get back into the video all right so the first thing we want to do is go to settings I'm running network 74156. Uh, this is uh, a UDM, but it doesn't matter. Same with UDM uh, Pro, UDM Pro SE, and UDR. Same thing. So uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to create some profiles. So we can go to profiles. This just makes it easier, and we're going to want to go to IP grouping. So it'll be default will be here. We want to go to IP grouping. So. What you might want to do is every time you make a VLAN, write it down. So every time you make a different VLAN. So if we go to networks, these are all the VLANs right here. So they have their default one that's separated. Usually they were before in the old one, they were together. Now they're separated. We got the default up here and we got your other VLANs down here, virtual networks of VLANs. So every time you add one, just write down this IP address, write down whatever IP address, whatever they're using slash 24 and write down what, uh, you know, is it guest? Is it IOT? Is it business? Is this the office? Is this the pool or just whatever kind of VLANs you're creating? Just write it down and the IP address associated with it. Cause you're going to need that for the uh, profiles. So then we'll go back to profiles. Now you don't have to use profiles, but it just makes it easier, especially if you're going to be adding in multiple IP addresses together. Instead of, you could do a separate and it's just one IP address. You're going to have to do a lot more firewall rules instead of consolidating them to a lot less. So it just this is just the smartest way to do it. So first thing is we want to go to uh, start creating a new network. So let's just say this is the IoT one. This is going to be IoT only. So I'm going to add all the other networks IP addresses here. So first of all, it's going to be, uh, if we go to we'll add a new one here, we'll go back, profiles, create new. It's going to be ports. We want to go to IP address and then you're going to start adding your IP address. You're going to want to call this like we go back, go leave because it didn't change anything. We want to go IOT only. So that means that all these other addresses here are going to be all the other VLANs that you don't want to be able to access IOT. So IOT will be separated from these, so this is what we gotta do. So put all those VLANs there, slash 24, slash depending on what IP address range you're doing, that's up to you guys, so you guys will know what to add in there. I can't do everyone, there's a whole bunch of different ranges, so you, but you'll know. If you're creating different VLANs, or just add whatever, slash 24 is on the back, or slash 16, slash eight, slash 12, Whatever you're doing, you're going to want to do that. And you're going to want to do this every for every, <coughs> I'm sorry, for every VLAN that you have. Don't have to worry about the default because uh, you just don't have to worry about that. That's only going to be yours anyways. We're just trying to block out all the other networks. So uh, the guest, same thing. Guest only, I call it. Make it easy. Guest only. Now, I'm, now in this one, I have uh, the default in here and I have the... Uh, IOT network. That's right. I was trying to think about it for a minute. I should have had my own written down as I'm showing you. So the IOT network. So you're going to put them all in there. Remember, we don't want the guests to go to the default, which is 1024, and we don't want it to go to the uh, IOT network. So that's why they're both in there. Same with the IOT. Uh, let's see here. If we go back to the IOT only one, we have the default, and then we have the guest network in here. So that when you surround the IOT, guess what? You ain't going to any of these other networks over here so that's why it's called iot only basically these other uh networks under here they're going to be excluded from the iot so cool rocket and possum 
So next, what we're going to want to do is, if you have a pie hole, if you're running a pie hole or something, or a certain DNS, this is going to be pre-toned to pie hole right now, but if you have, I like to call it pie hole DNS, it runs at port 53, so just add, put in your port number here, if it was whatever, it's 53, so you just put 3 and hit add, remember you have to hit add and then hit save, so you're going to want that for your pie hole, and we'll add that in the fire hole rules later, it'll be a different way of doing it. These are basically just like templates, so when you go to create the firewall rules, we can grab from these things that we've created, it just makes it so much simpler. <clears throat> now we want to go to block gateway. So that means, you know, block your, uh, what, gosh, I can't even think of it right now. What am I talking about, Miles? Think, 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 think. Oh, blocking your UDM interface and all that stuff from everything. So we want to, we can do uh, 192.168.1.1. So that's going to help block the gateway because that's what uh, IP addresses of their router. So we don't want them to be accessed. We don't want them to be able to access the interface of the router. Not at all. So we want to put that in there. Uh, and then we want to go to, so whatever IP address, so whatever your router's default address is, put it in there because it's called block gateway. So you'll know how you, what uh, IP address you put in to access your router's interface. You're going to want to put that there too because we're going to block that to the VLANs that we don't want accessing our network. Next, we're going to want to go to uh, block SSH. These are the ports that people will be accessing on our network and stuff like that so this is for uh the udm interface again so these are the ports that they can go through so you want to block the ports you know ssh all that stuff so we're going to want this too so just copy these ports right here these ports you just copy these ones these are right so 80 443 and 2022 they'll be the same in yours trust me those are the ports that the router uses to open to allow certain things to communicate through so Copy those down, you can even name it the same. It makes it easy so you can follow this video, but it'll be rocking and rolling. Okay. All right, guys. So next, the last thing we're gonna do is RFC 1918. This is gonna block inter-VLAN routing. We're gonna definitely need this, and it's gonna be able to allow the default to all the networks, the default network, if we want to. So we're definitely gonna wanna add this in. It's a standard for all RFC 1918, so just copy what I have and you should be rocking and rolling. And then let's get into the next step. That's it, yeah, that's basically it right there then. These are all the rules that we need right now. Now comes the fun part. We get to create the firewall rules and stuff like that about what we just created. Now we get to use it. So this is the cool thing. So firewall and security, we'll go here. All right, guys, I wanted to let you know too, before we start doing these firewall rules, every time I'm saying copy what I'm doing, I mean, Go to here and go to create new entry on go to all rules, doesn't matter, each way. Scroll down, just go to create new entry, and then you'll follow me as I'm clicking my other ones and just create them as you're going for the ones that you will need. All right, let's get back into it. Now, if we go down, we can go down firewall rules. All rules, I like to look at it this way. So now, as you can see, we're gonna go through these steps one by one. So what I like to do first is do uh, allow boom to IOT or allow a pie hole. So you want to get, you're going to get the internet going first. So what you're first going to want to do is go to allow guest. So this is a uh, allow guest to pie hole. You're going to want to do LAN in description, allow guest to pie hole. So you know what you're doing. So when you look at your firewall rules, you know what it is. We're going to accept because we want to accept the pie hole because it's on a different VLAN than the other stuff. We want to make sure it can be able to go to it. So then I put a uh, source type. We're going to go port IP group. Remember those IP groups you made? We put guest only. So we're going to have guest only on that. So this is the guest network. See, so allow guest to pie hole. So this is guest only. So it excludes all those other IP addresses we had at the bottom. And then port any, keep that all the same. And then destination type, port group, uh, IVP for any. But here we go. Under here, we want port group right here. We want... DNS, our pie hole DNS. That's what you want to put, and all this is blank. Just hit save, and boom, that one rule is done. Now, depending on how many networks you have, you're going to have to do it again. So we just did guest to pie hole, now we got to do IoT to pie hole. Same thing. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to communicate. So once we finish all the other firewall rules. So next is, we're going to want to go to LAN in. We're going to go allow pie hole to whatever you want it to be called. I'm, this is IoT. 
And then I want to go to accept because we're not going to block. Port group, there's all different ones that we're going to port group because we created that port group, IoT only this time. And then we're going to go to port leave that any, destination type, port group, IP group, IP4 group, any, just leave it there. And then at the bottom here again, pihole DNS. So save that and then that's good. So then we'll go back to firewall rules. Go back down here. And then down here too, you want to make sure if you're accepting, you don't want the drop to be over the accepting because otherwise it's going to block it in its way. So you just got to think of it that way. I like to have mine, all the accept above all the drops anyways, just to make sure you can do it any way you want in between. As long as the rule that uh, the block is after the allow stuff, depending on what you're doing, it will block it. Just keep it this way. It's easy, simple, you're rocking and rolling. Um, so next what we're going to do is we want to allow established and related. This is different that we hadn't make any IP groups to this. This is just going to make sure the traffic goes where you want it to go. So you're going to want to do LAN in and you want you can call it established and related. You should just call it established and related. Accept all. And then at the bottom, keep all these the same, but instead of the very bottom here, you want to go to manual and put match established and match state related. You want to keep that and hit save and that one's done. Then after that, you're going to want to go down to drop invalid state. So drop invalid states now. So you can make this the exact same as me. Just copy it and you'll be good to go. So we got LAN in, drop invalid state. We're going to go to uh, drop all. And then we're going to scroll down. Don't mess with any of this stuff again. And then here at the very bottom, we're going to hit match state invalid. So click that and then hit save and boom, that one's done. We'll go back to our rules because I'm just doing this now. These rules are already created. This is running on a network right now. I'm not lucky enough to have another UDM where I can just, you know, have an extra. I don't have that money yet. Maybe down the road I will. But yeah, this is what I have to do for now. I don't want to mess up other people's stuff or bring my network down when I have the family home. But let's get back into it. So next, what we're going to want to do, and I will be showing you too in the end of this video, how to add devices to allow them on certain VLANs to communicate across. If you have like, well, I want this printer to go to the guest too, but I want it to be the default, I'll show you all that too. So, all right. Oh, hey, if you guys like these videos, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you guys don't miss any of my videos. All right, let's get back into it. All right, so we got drop in valid state. Next thing that we're going to want to do, we did the pie hole, style some related. Now we want to go to allow default to all VLANs. So we can allow default to all VLANs. So we got LAN in, allow default to all VLANs, keep it the same. We want to go to uh, network, keep it all the same here, default, because that's our network type. We have the default network. It's already there. It's under default. We want the default. We want to go to destination type, IP group, or uh, a port or IP group. And then we want to use that RFC 1918. We want to use that in there, keep everything else the same, hit save, and boom, we're done. And that's going to allow your VLAN to be able to talk through what it need, your default one. It can go through if it needs to. But nothing else can come over. Remember, nothing else can come over. So next, we'll go back here, and we're going to go to block inner VLAN routing. We're going to create this. So we're going to do LAN in. You can I would name it the exact same, block inner VLAN routing. We're going to hit drop. And then down here, we're going to pick source type. We're going to pick port group. And we're going to pick RFC 1918. And then destination, we're going to put port group, uh, IP group, uh, RC, uh, I mean RFC 1918 again. And we're going to hit apply. And we'll be rocking and rolling then. This is going to block the inner VLAN routing. That's why we use this RFC for the default one to allow it to go to the other VLAN still if the default wants to, but nothing can come over. So this is gonna block all inner VLAN routing from all the other networks and stuff like that too. So now, what we're gonna wanna do next is the fun thing. We're gonna go to block all IoT to all. So we're gonna hit type, LAN in, destination, block IoT to all, we're going to hit drop because we're blocking. So we want it to be drop. We're going to hit the network. The network is IoT. 
Then we're gonna go to the port, port group. Remember we created that group of all those IOP, IP addresses in there, whatever, remember yours are different than mine, unless you're running the same VLANs. I mean, you could have the same numbers, it's possible, but you could have different IP ranges where it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter. You just go down here, we're gonna select our, you know, all our stuff that we created are in here from the port group. So we're gonna hit IOT only. And then we're gonna leave all this default and hit save and boom, that's done. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna go down to my next group. You might have to do this multiple times depending on how much VLANs you have. I only have, well, there's only three on this one. So there's the default and then there's really only two other, well, yeah, there's three VLANs, the default, IOT and the guests. So I don't have to do it so many times. So now we're gonna go to, um, block guest to all so we're going to create lan in block guest to all or you can name it whatever you want this is what my VLAN, this vlan is guest remember drock network this time is guest uh port destination is ip group and we're going to do it uh, guest only and hit save rock it and rolling we're almost done uh, well i am almost done i don't know how many vlans you have but all right so next at the bottom here we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna create another one. Now you're not gonna, you, when you create them, you're gonna be hitting this button right here, create entry. And you're gonna create an entry right there. I already have these in here, so just giving you a heads up with that. Uh, so what we're gonna wanna do next is, we're gonna wanna block the interfaces. We don't want them to go to the interface to be able to go to them. We don't want the guest to be able to go to the, my UDM interface or any of that. You don't want the IoT to be able to go to the UDM interface. So we're gonna go to I'm gonna create a new group. Remember, all this is the same. You're gonna to wanna to do LAN in, description, block IoT to UDM interface, right there. We want to action drop. IP4, all, source type, network, IoT. It's our IoT network. That's why it's called block IoT. Then we're gonna do our destination is the UDM. So we're gonna hit IP group. We're gonna hit block gateway, like we create over there. So that's the IP address. And we're gonna hit port group. Block, uh, block HTTP, HTTP, SSH. We're gonna hit all those. And you're just gonna hit, boom, save. And that one's done. Now you're gonna go to the next one. That was IOT, I think it was. Well, hopefully it was. If I'm not, I'm, let's see here. Yeah, we'll go to the next one, block guest. Same thing again, block guest to UDM interface. Network, guest. Port group, block to gateway. And then uh, block uh, HTTP. Uh, HTTPS and SSH, and we're gonna hit save again. Now make sure you hit drop right here and all that stuff. And then you're gonna wanna go to, once you're back in your firewall rules, you wanna make sure that you're, you're gonna see these drop states here. You can pause them anytime too. You can pause them right here and re-enable them, but you can move them. If you grab this, you can move them up and down. Make sure that uh, your accepts are all above your drops and you should be rocking and rolling. These ones down here, they're in a different, they're in, they're in land local, so they're way down below. This is just land in stuff, so don't worry about that. If you can add other stuff too, these are just the basics. There's a lot more stuff you can do. Uh, I will be showing how to do uh, firewall rules with WireGuard and OpenVPN, but for right now, I just wanna get you guys going and get you guys excited so you guys can do this yourself. It's pretty dang cool. And then after, right now, I'm going to show you how to add other devices on your network. So, printer to guest. I have my printer on my default. I want it to be able to go to the guest if somebody comes over and wants to print. They don't have to bother me or anything like that. So all you do is go, it's LAN in, printer to guest, because I want it on the guest network. And I'm going to hit accept, all, and the source type is going to be the network. And I want it to be on guest. And then I'm gonna go destination is the IP address and my printer's IP address is 192.168.1.101. And that's my default network. So I know that that is, that's why it's important to have static IP addresses on your network stuff. You get improved reliability. So, and you actually, your speed, and your speed does increase a little bit. Not as in like, oh my gosh, I'm getting, no, it's just, it's just gonna be more stable, so it's gonna seem faster and everything. It's just better to have static IP addresses on your stuff that's gonna be on your network. Guest, who cares? That's, they're not gonna be on your network all the time, but your main stuff, yes. So now, since I have a static IP address on my printer, I can set it to a VLAN and uh, put it in the firewall rules. If it wasn't a static IP address, as soon as the power went out or the printer restarted, it would give it a new IP address and then nobody would be able to access that printer anymore. So 
You need static IP addresses. <laughs> Let's just say that. And then you know what's on your network. I can take a look at my network anytime and I can look instantly like, oh yeah, everything's fine on there. I know everything that's on that network and stuff like that. I don't have to worry about anything. Like my mother and father-in-law, if I go here, boom, everything's on there on their network. Their network's not huge. Got their phones, one of the phones is there. I know everyone's on here, what stuff. I can just know. They're all, they're all just fine, so it really doesn't matter. So it's just... That's what you want to do. Just keep yourself safe and everything like that. But yeah, so I hope this helped you guys. I made these videos for you. I just wanted you to have a rock and rolling day. Uh, get all your stuff done. And just make sure that everything is working as perfectly as possible. And once you guys do this, it's just going to be so cool. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But it's just, it's awesome. And I hope this helped you. Just remember... It's not really difficult at all the way I'm doing it for you. I mean, I might have been a lot of stuff, but there's only a couple things you guys have to worry about. Remember, your, v your networks. Copy them down of what's what. The name of the network and the subnet. That's all you gotta get, uh, the IP address. It shouldn't say IP address there, but whatever. Just, you know, the IP address of that uh, different network, so yeah. Then, all you guys gotta have to do is go down to profiles again. Remember, the port profiles, all the ones are recreated. So, to be honest, the only ones that you guys will do different than me is, or in case it's the same, you might not have to, the default gateway, the block the gateway, that's the router's IP address to log into it, to change settings, whatever you're using, use that. You should know it, or you wouldn't be in your interface in your router anyways. Uh, block these ports right here, HTTP, SSH, those should be the exact same, no matter what IP address range you're using. Uh, and then RC1918, that, those should be the exact same too. It doesn't matter what IP address you're rating, so just use those two. That's why I said just name it the same. Oh, actually, it went back. Uh, port, there we go. Okay. And the pie hole would be the same. Pie hole is port 53. That's what they use the DNS, so that's if you're using a pie hole, just do that too. Okay, and then, and if you had multiple pie holes or something like that, you could do, uh, you know, you could, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. I mean, there's a different, IP. You, could, you could just do, there's a million. You could just do IP address ranges. I just did this. It's just, there's a lot you can do. Sorry, I don't want to over stimulate your brain right now, but yeah, get going, have fun. I was so excited to be able to make this video for you guys. I appreciate every comment. I appreciate every sub. I get so excited, even one every day, like, Oh, let's see what oh yeah i gotta keep going keep going keeps me going every day it's like coffee to me i'm not a big coffee drinker unless there's chocolate in it so i'm not a big alcohol drinker unless it's a party and i don't go to those that often so i'm not really worried about that you know every once in a while i'll have one maybe like once every six months or something like that or not but yeah so yeah hey i hope you and your family are having a rock and rolling day peace out rock on and i hope to hear you in the comments and i hope you you and your family are having an awesome day. Peace out.